So it's that time of month again where I talk about five Linux applications that I'd, I've discovered or used over the course of the last month and I want to share them with you guys. So I do this once a month where I come up with five applications that I've discovered online and I then make a video like this one. So if you want to see previous months, there's a whole playlist linked below where you can go catch all the other applications that I've found over the course of the last couple of years. So without further ado, let's talk about the top five Linux apps of September 2024. But before we jump in, leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it, especially if you like this series. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first one is a, an application that I had a little bit of a problem with simply because it doesn't work well with dark themes. As you'll see in the B-roll that's coming up, there are certain things that just don't work well with the way my system is themed. So we'll look past that. But basically, this is called Caligra, and it is a KDE office suite. Now, if you think of those three words together, this is exactly what you think it is. It is a office suite designed for KDE, and it looks like that as well it's not the best designed w office suite that you've ever seen before but it is perfectly functional there's a word processor there's a presentation application and there is an a there is a spreadsheet application so the, the basics are here and it works fairly well it has a lot of interesting features there's extensibility here with a lot of plugins that you can build into it if you want to as well and you can do the stuff you'd do in a normal office application, only it looks like it was built for KDE. So if you are a KDE user and you're looking for an office suite that fits in with the rest of your environment, this could be it. Now, I put a little proviso there, just like I talked at the beginning. It doesn't seem to work well with themes, at least the theme that I use. So that may be a deal breaker for some people. I know it would be for me because this doesn't look that great at all, but perhaps it will work better for you. The one thing that I didn't test with it is actually importing like Microsoft Office Docs. I have no clue if that functionality exists or not. I assume that it probably does because otherwise it wouldn't be a very good Office suite at all. But I didn't test that. I don't actually have any Office suites to test or Office uh, documents to test it on. I don't use Office documents. I use Google Docs. So uh, I, I could have done that here. I suppose I could have I, Google lets you download Google Docs. I suppose I could have done that, but I didn't. So that's beside the point. Anyways, that's an Office Suite for KDE. It's called Caligra. You should definitely give it a try if that's your cup of tea. So the next one is something that I'm going to mispronounce. So I'll apologize to the developer right now. Uh, Musam Weather. M O U S A M, I believe, is what it's called and how it's or how it's spelled. It is a very simple but well-designed weather application. That's basically what it is. There's really not that much more to say about it. There, there's no radar functionality or anything like that. So you're not gonna get you're not gonna be able to delve deep and become the the next weatherman with this thing. It's just going to give you the temperature, the chance of precipitation, the humidity, things like that. Hour by hour is there. Wind forecasts are there, and it's just a very nicely designed and dynamically designed weather application. When I say dynamically designed, it will change the background. So if it's you know, sun's shiny and, you know, cloudy or whatever, the background will change. That's cool, right? And it did have one weird quirk where I tried to change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit with the button, which you'll probably see in the B-roll, which didn't work. But if I clicked on the word Fahrenheit, that did end up working. Uh, it's just a weird quirk of it, but it ended up changing okay. You can add multiple locations, so if you want to keep track of different locations, you can do that as well. And it just seems to pull in data from open weathers from what I'm guessing. So if you are into a very well designed weather application, this might be it for you. The next one I have on the list is a game and this is called Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe. Now I had never heard of Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe before. Now I've obviously heard of Tic-Tac-Toe, but never Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe. And you can tell it from the way that I play that. Now I actually won the first two games that you guys will see here in the B-roll. Basically what this is, is it's, it's a, tic -tac a game of Tic-Tac-Toe within a game of tic-tac-toe. So you're trying to play nine games at once and you need to obviously win those individual, game, individual games, but when you win an individual game, you get that block as yours and you gotta get three blocks in a row. So it's like two tic-tac-toe games in a row. Kind of interesting, never really heard of that before and it was kind of fun. So if you're into tic a very simple time-wasty type of game, this is it. 
it does offer multiple multiplayer. So if you want to play with someone who's actually in the room with you, you could do that if you want to. So if you like have a Linux tablet or whatever or a Linux phone, you could put this on there. And this would be that'd be a great experience on this where you could just kind of type or tap the screen to play. So Ultimate Tic Tac Toe is a neat but very simple game of Tic Tac Toe, but within a Tic Tac Toe game. Really cool. So that's that one. The next one on the list is also very simple. Now I don't I've tried Pomodoro in the past. Now, if you don't know what Pomodoro is, it's basically a way of working that allows you to work a solid 25 minutes, supposedly without interruption, and then you take a certain amount of time break, right? And this supposedly allows you to work more efficiently and without stressing yourself out too much. That's basically what it is at the very basis level, right? And the idea here is that you time everything. The app we're going to talk about this time is called Flow Time, and Flow Time is basically just a counter. Now, if that's all it was, probably wouldn't have made the list, but it's actually pretty cool. So first off, it'll automatically not only keep time for you once you press the start button, but it will then calculate the amount of break that you've earned. So you automatically get a certain amount of break for the amount of time that you've worked. Now you can change that ratio in the settings as well, which is cool. So if you want to have, if you work want to work for 30 minutes and get a 10% break added on top of that, you can set that up. That's cool. Also, what's really awesome about this is that it will keep track of statistics. So if you're a statistics nerd and you like to track everything, this will keep track of the amount of time that you've been working and the amount of time you spent on break. So if you use this for a long period of time, you can kind of use, get charts on how well you've been doing in terms of working and taking breaks. That's really cool. Now, there's not much more to it other than that. You can set it so that it automatically starts the timer when you switch back and forth between working and break time, which is not on by default, and I think that it should be. But other than that, if you're into Pomodoro stuff, this is probably the best timer that I've seen, and that's cool. So it, flow time if you're into Pomodoro. Not sure if I'm actually saying that word right. Maybe I mispronounced it. I don't know. Okay, anyways, the last one on the list is I'm very frustrated with this app because I had such high hopes for it, but it, and it's possible that I'm just doing something wrong, which is why I've kept it on the list. It's called Paper, and Paper is a note-taking application. Now, I adore note-taking applications. You guys know this. I talk about them a lot on the channel. I'm currently using something called Iotis. I really like that. I also use Obsidian quite a bit for longer notes, and then I sync everything with Nextcloud. I had, ho had hoped that Paper had built-in Nextcloud synchronization. It does not, but you can always get around with that by just using your next cloud directory on your system and use the next cloud app to, to uh, synchronize those it didn't work that well so that was kind of like the first strike i imported all the notes that i have in my next cloud notes directory it didn't import all of them i'm not sure it didn't it, it's like it didn't recognize all the recursive folders in there it just recognized the stuff on the top level which was disappointing so there was the first strike second of all it does support markdown now as you see in the b-roll or you will see in the b-roll I'm saying it supports Markdown with a weirdly weird tonality because it only kind of supports Markdown. One of my biggest pet peeves about these type these types of apps is when they, they support Markdown, but not all the way. This one doesn't support it all the way, which is really disappointing. It doesn't work with lists, and it doesn't work with headings beyond heading one. Why? Don't know. It's really weird. You can obviously set those things up manually through the menu system, but... That was a problem that I had with it. It really kind of bugged me. But other than that, just get past my little nitpicking stuff. It is a really well-designed note-taking application that offers you the opportunity to organize your notes into folders. And that's basically what it is. And it also has good formatting opportunities for you outside of Markdown. So you can use the formatting toolbar there at the bottom to format the, the text as you want. It allows you to insert images and stuff like that. It also allows you to group your notes in certain ways. So it is a nice little fairly simple note-taking application. If it did better Markdown, it'd be damn good. As is, I'd recommend giving it a try, but it may not be for everyone. So that is Paper, and those are the top five Linux apps of this month, and I hope you guys enjoyed them. If you have apps that you'd like to see featured on this list in the future, leave those in the comment section below, but do not leave me a link to them. YouTube will just automatically yoink those things right from the comment section, and they'll never be seen again. So don't leave me a link, just mention the, the app name, 
uh, and what it does so that I can do a Google search on my own and find it. So if you have an app you want to suggest, leave those in the comment section below. Or if you have thoughts on the apps that I've talked about this month, again, comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channels would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very much i think that i have everyone who has subscribed on patreon back up here where you need to be so finally got that done if you're on youtube your name is still either on here or not on here unfortunately that's a situation that i'm gonna have to rectify in the future because it's still a mess so working on that anyways thanks for your support if you want to support me on patreon patreon.com slash the linux cast you can also head on over to the store, which is available at shop.thelinuscast.org. There you'll find all sorts of merch. All the pro proceeds for that go to helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for your, uh, your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you 